Welcome everybody. Um, this today's video, I want to show you how to find the resonant frequency of a primary coil that is used for uh, making a double resonant solid state Tesla coil. And ideally what you want to do is have the resonant frequency of the primary coil and the secondary coil pretty much identical. The secondary probably uh, has to have a slightly higher resonant frequency because you have to account for streamers which can increase the capacitance of the top load on the secondary and therefore reduce its uh, resonant frequency a little bit by about probably 10%. But anyway, uh, for, all in for all intents and purposes, it's best to get them identical. And uh, so first of all, I'm going to start with this primary. And I have just a uh, a few turns of copper wire around this plastic PVC former and then that's connected um, in parallel with a 0.5 sorry 0.15 microfarad capacitor. I have no idea what the resonant frequency of this is so what I've done and I've seen this actually on another video um, and that's why I wanted to show you show you it I couldn't find that video again but anyway I was able to remember the setup so you have um, that set up there. You've put in, you know, about 10, 20 k ohm resistor right there, and that goes to a free, a re variable frequency generator or signal generator. And I've set this on sine waves, but you can use like uh, square waves as well. And the purpose of the 10 k resistor is that so you won't be picking up the um, you won't be picking up the signal from the frequency generator. So this is the basic setup here. You've got a capacitor, that's 0.15 microfarads, some wire turns, and then there's a scope connected across the uh, coil. And then the signal generator seen there is connected into the coil that you wanna, that you wanna determine its resonant frequency via a 10K resistor. If there was no 10K resistor, all you'd see on the scope would be the output of the signal generator. But with the 10K resistor, it lowers the signal from the signal generator enough that the scope won't see it, or it'll see it very small. And then once the coil goes into resonance, um, it will produce a much bigger output that will be detected by the scope. So that's the setup that I have here. And here's my uh, digital scope, and that's the frequency that's currently set on. It's 112 kilohertz, and I'm going to slowly turn up the uh, frequency on this and look at the um, output. So we're going to go up, and we'll look at the output. So. When we get the maximum output, that would be the resonant frequency of the coil. So there you can see it's increasing as I'm increasing it. I'm just increasing it by minute amounts so I don't overshoot it. See, now I've started to overshoot it. It's gone into hibernation mode. Hang on a sec. There you go. So let's uh, do that again. It just hibernated on me. Maximum. And that maximum is centered on 160 kilohertz. Now, if I, was, if I was to decrease the number of turns of this coil, the resonant frequency should go up. So let's do that. So this coil is set up so that I can move the position of change the size of the coil just by moving about this clip. So there I've put it on a lower, so it's got like five turns in it. And as you can see there, it's off resonance. Now I'm gonna turn up the frequency some more and see what that does. It's going back into resonance and it's resonating right about there. So, and that's 196 kilohertz. 
and uh, let's do this again. Let's um, move it so that it's like let's do it like four turns like that. Let's see what that does. Okay, it's off resonance again. So I'm going to increase the frequency some more to get it back into resonance. Notice that the uh, voltage I'm getting across the coil at resonance is less, with less turns. And that's now resonating at 227 kilohertz. So uh, anyway, that's uh, how you determine the resonant frequency of your primary, and you can adjust it, you know, and then cut the wire to size to match that of your secondary. So now I'm going to show you how uh, to look at the resonant frequency of the secondary. Okay, now to tuning of the secondary. This is a little bit of a different setup. Um, you have your scope, uh, as you can see there, and that's uh, one end of the scope is unconnected, just leave it dangling in the air. The other end of the scope, you can connect to uh, a piece of metal wire to use it as a probe. And that can be, you know, one to two feet away from your, uh, from your secondary coil. Now the secondary has the toroid oil already on it because you want to know what its resonant frequency is with the toroid. And also, if you can add a little piece of wire approximating the length of a streamer, that would give you an even more accurate frequency as to what it would be resonating at once it's developing streamers. Now the, um, the uh, secondary coil is connected to the signal generator and again I'm using a variable frequency signal generator and um, the other end of the signal generator is just left dangling in the air, it's unconnected. And uh, I've got it set on around 146.9 kilohertz and that's what the output looks like that blue trace at the top is the output and uh, here's the coil and you have to uh, be careful where you're placing it you want to ideally tune it in the same environment that you're going to run it now I've got a bunch of metal I've got that vise right there on the end I've got some other metal things here on the desk that would change its frequency um, just by being in proximity to it and uh, so, you know, this is not the ideal setup. You want to have it in the same room that you'd be running it and tune it up under those circumstances. This one's already got its, it's got its um, primary call already added. Having the primary there or not does not really make a whole lot of difference. Maybe one or two kilohertz in, uh, difference in terms of its frequency, its resonant frequency. And uh, the other end of this coil, as I said, is just unconnected, so, so you're only connecting it to the base of the coil, as, you, as seen here. So let's start to increase the frequency and see what happens to the output on the oscilloscope. So there I'm going, increasing the frequency, and here's your output as I increase the frequency. We're going to try and max it out. You may see some harmonics. What you want to record is the first frequency that you run into where the amplitude increases and that's your true resonant frequency and it's starting to go up now it's really starting to shoot up I'm going to go past it now it's going down again so I'm going to do that again coming back the other way this time it's maxed out right about there and that frequency is 261 kilohertz. So what you do is you adjust your, you would adjust your primary to have that frequency. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, here's a piece of wire and I'm going to pretend that this is a streamer and I'm going to attach this to see what effect it would have on that, on that frequency. So um, I'm just about to attach it right now, so let's find a place to put this. We'll put it right there at that breakout point. So that is now attached. That's my streamer just dangling down there. And as you can see, it's no longer at resonance. So let's see what effect that's had. Without it, let's take it off and see what happens. So take the piece of wire off, it's back in resonance. 
put the piece of wire back on, I a streamer, and it stopped resonating. So the streamer has its own capacitance, which adds to the capacitance of the uh, top load and puts it off resonance. So I'm gonna find out where it is resonating. Now remember it was 261 kilohertz without the streamer. The wire is the streamer. Now with the streamer, it's 229. So it's really dropped it quite a bit. It's dropped it from 260 to 229, the presence of that streamer. That's actually quite a bit of difference, uh, more than I expected. You know, it's roughly uh, 30, 30 kilohertz drop, which is more than 10% actually. So that's, that's something else. So we're gonna take that off. We'll take that off and let's see what happens. And it's no longer resonating. I'm going to take it back up to 260, which is where it was resonating. And there it's going. Now I'm going to show you the effect of things that are pro I'm going to move my hand near it and see what it does. So just having my hand near it knocks it off resonance. So I'm moving my hand towards it. Now my hand's away from it. So it's very sensitive to objects around it. That metal bias that's on the uh, desk right near it, I'm going to take that off and see what effect that has. That didn't have a whole lot of effect. It went down because I put my hand near it to take the bias off. So this is hand near it, hand away from it. So. Uh, Thanks for watching, I'm glad you had a chance to see these.